Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explain. My name is David, and today we're going to go over another algorithm question. It is from Eatabit. Hopefully I'm saying it right. I'm not too familiar with this platform, but hopefully I do get to know it better in the coming weeks, months, whatever. Um, anyways, uh, you know what I'm doing. I'm going over their algorithm question, and we're just going to explain the solution and how I got to it. This is... Eatabit is a algorithm platform just very similarly to uh, Leak Code or Code Wars. Uh, I've done a couple of videos for those platforms also, and here we go. This is uh, considered one of their medium level questions, and uh, I personally, well, I do these before I do the videos, and I thought this might have been um, more rightfully an easier question, but uh, as I get to know the platform better, um, I'll kind of understand how they structure their or classify their problems. Anyways, this, this is called how much is true. Uh, we're going to do it in JavaScript and as you can see, you can do it in a couple of different languages. All right, create a function which returns the number of true values there are in an array. So it looks like uh, this is an example, count true. It's going to be the function name. We're going to be given an array and we want to output two here because of these values, there are five values here and two of them are true. True here and true here. In the second example, we have four values in our array, but none of them are true, so we return a zero. And if it's an empty array, return zero. That's kind of easy because um, in this case, if it's zero, then we can just pretend, okay, we never ever counted a false, or we never counted a true, so that's gonna be a zero. Return zero if given an empty array. Return all array items return uh okay sorry all array items are of the type boolean true or false okay so that kind of gives us that answers a couple of questions for us um in terms of asking about edge cases uh, like what can we possibly get in terms of what's going to be in those values um it looks like we are going to either get true or false they're not talking about truesy or falsy values so we don't have to worry about that we're literally going to get true or false in the boolean type so we're not going to get strings we're going to get true or false um, another thing is we might want to ask the interviewer or anybody else what if we are is it always guaranteed to be an array is it what if we get a single um like instead of an array with true inside of it could we possibly get anything other than array maybe perhaps just true in there and then it would break our and then we would have to account for that stuff. But in this case, it looks like um, we're always going to be given an array, whether it's going to have something or not in it. And if it does have something in it, it's going to be true or false. And those are going to be of type Boolean. It's not going to be of type true. So let's go ahead and code this. All right, so first of all, what we want to do is at the end of the problem, we want to return how many truths we had. So let's uh, create a count that's going to be our counter. and I don't like how that spacing just, uh, okay, there we go. That's better spacing. And so we have our count that's going to count through our, how many trues we had. And what we want to do is, since we're given an array, the basic, most basic thing we want to do is iterate through the array with a for loop. And so uh, let's go ahead and create that. Then array.length. All right, and what are we going to do? We're going to check, okay, if the array of that index that we're looking at is equal to true, then we're going to increment our count. And then at the end here, we're going to return count. So let's go ahead and check this and see what we get. All right, so all, the, all of it passed. And one thing that I do like about this platform read a bit is that you can see the tests here. Uh, that's one thing that you can't do in LeetCode, although in LeetCode what you can do is you could create your own tests and I wish that there was a way for us to edit that here, like um, I'm pressing enter or, or some backspaces and keyboard, but you can't, you can't edit these. But at least you can see which ones are failing if you do fail it. And so a couple things here, um, uh, you probably, this was the solution of course, uh, it can be done in a very uh, more succinct, fa succinct fashion too, like if you want to play some code golf or whatnot, but uh, basically what we did was we created a counter here because at the end of the whole function we want to return the count of trues 
And so we had to start with zero. And of course, if the array was empty, then we would never go into the for loop and we would ultimately return a zero anyways. And so that took care of the empty array case. In our for loop, we start at zero. This is kind of how we initialize it. We start i here. Uh, we iterate through the array until we, and inc incrementing it until we hit one less than the length. And right here we say, okay, if array of i is true, then count uh, plus plus. This is incrementing count. And what happens here is we're not checking to, we're not going to check against the string true, which is different because then, uh, yeah, it's different. Um, true itself is a Boolean. It's a, it's a different type, just like how a number is a num type or something like that. Um, true is a Boolean type, just how strings are a string type. Uh, you get the idea. And so we just made sure, okay, whatever we're iterate, whatever index or item we are currently, in this case, maybe right here, false would be the zeroth index. False would be the first index, second index, third index. Um, like that, we just compare it against whether it was true or not, and if it is true, we're, we're going to increment the count. If not, we're not going to worry about it because we're not trying to figure out how many falses there are. And so anyways, that is pretty much the problem. Uh, and uh, again, let me su su submit this real quick. And yeah, I think that I don't do a final submit because I already submitted it while I was uh, making sure I had the algorithm down before the video recording. So anyways, uh, if you like this video, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you have particular Edabit questions that you would like to see me do, go ahead and uh, write in the comments, or of course you can ask me questions via email at algosexplained at gmail.com. Uh, and hopefully uh, this was helpful, and I'll try to do more and more harder questions on Edabit, and of course if it gets too hard, I might have to jump to the whiteboard and stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good one. Bye.